Welcome to another photo editing tutorial, again using Lumina Neo. So if you haven't seen my last video, you should go and watch it, because in it I give you a full introduction of Lumina Neo, how the software works. Today we're going to focus on some creative edits, and I want to show you five tools of Lumina Neo which work very well for futuristic photos. So if you have some night photos of a cityscape like here, this is Hong Kong, then you can use the techniques I show now to yeah, give those images an even more cyberpunk look. Let me quickly show you the final here. So I went from this here, which is mostly raw edits and Lightroom. So as I said in the previous video, the raw editing, I usually prefer to do in Lightroom. You can also do it directly in Lumina, so it's up to you. Lumina comes with a full-featured studio where you have catalog and everything, but yeah, I usually do those in Lightroom. Then I brought everything over in Photoshop, did some stacking because I had people here in the frame and yeah, I just overlapped the different photos and removed the people. And now the creative editing, which I'll do in Lumina Neo, and we're going from this image to this one here, so much more atmosphere. The first step, I usually duplicate the layer, then go to Filter, Skylum Software. So this is how it will appear in Photoshop. You'll also have it, as I showed in the last video, directly accessible in Lightroom. So if you prefer to not use Photoshop at all, you can do so. Then I go to Lumina Neo, which starts up Lumina Neo as a plugin. And once it's open, I'll show you the five awesome techniques I like to use for my cityscape photos, at least for the more futuristic ones. So the software is now loaded. We're here in the presets. I don't have presets yet, so I directly head over to the Edit tab, which loads the myriad of editing tools that are part of Lumina Neo. And yeah, as I already showed you in the first video, Magic Light AI. This one I like to use for images where I already have some sunburst or sun star effect around street lights or lights in general. So let's start with this tool here. This is the first tool I like to use for my cityscape photos. And first I'll bring up the intensity bit so we better see the sun stars. Number of beams uh, adjusted to what your original lens had. So I think mine had eight. Then you can rotate it so it basically fits with what you already have. And then you can adjust the clearness a bit. So I want a little hazy look around it. And you also see this rendering arrow here, this square shouldn't be there. Not sure, maybe this is because of my graphics card. Anyways, just ignore it. It happens only if I move over the image. So I can increase the glow, so to make those lights glow even more. And I can increase the size if I want, but I don't want to go too far. So a little bit of glow around the lights usually looks nice. Can make the beams wider or shorter. Now let's see the before and after. So it's already dramatic difference. So maybe let's bring down the intensity a bit. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with that. And you can certainly play around with those sliders more and yeah, fine tune it. After the magic light, I want to show you the second tool I like to use. And yeah, it's not that intuitive. So here we have this neon glow. If you click on it, you get this little pencil and you can draw with it. So let's just do it and I show you how Neon Glow usually looks. Looks nice, but it really has no place in this photo. So I usually don't like to draw shapes with it. So let's undo that. What I rather like to do is just use a single brush stroke to create a light source with this Neon Glow. And I want to add it here in the center. So just a single click. And now we have this magenta glow, but doesn't fit right. But I want to have here, and we're going to use the hue slider, to have something more cyan or bluish. Can also make it more white, so it has a little less color to it. And yeah, now this is not really what I want to do. Now I have a light here. It's a bit out of place, right? There's no light source. But the interesting thing now comes if you use here the atmosphere slider. So let's increase the atmosphere and see what it does. So now with this light being the origin, creates a nice soft glow around the light. So see before and after. And this looks nice because it creates kind of an ethereal glow here in the center part. You can also play around with the spread, a really fine tune it. Now look at before and after. You can also play around with the amount here. This looks nice, but we still have this glow in the center, which 
as I said, looks out of place. So what I now do is go to the masking here, select the brush, go to the erase brush with a strength of like 50 and with a little smaller size. I paint here and kind of remove that center glow a bit, something like that. And now we look at the before and after. We really have a nice glow going on here. And yeah, that's the way I like to use the neon glow for my images. You can also, if you have real light sources, use this technique and just put a single brush stroke onto those light sources and then modify them and give them more atmosphere. Okay, this was tool number two. Now let's go to the next one. You already see here is also a glow. Let's go to this one and select just the glow. So I don't want soft focus or the autumn effects, just the glow. Let's increase the amount. So you see it further brightens up this area. Now you can again change the color to so make it cool. And now we want to bring up the contrast. It darkens down the outer parts of the image a bit. So bring down the softness. And now we can tweak the brightness a bit and again play with the amount. So we don't want to go too far, otherwise it gets too bright here in the center. But let's see the before and the after. A dramatic difference. So I think I even went a bit too far with the contrast. Let's go with something like this before and after. And that's what I also said in the first video. With all this editing power here in Lumina Neo, most likely you'll go a bit too far with those edits. That's fine. That's why I put those on a separate layer. So I'll now do those edits, bring them to Photoshop, and then maybe even let the image sit for one or two days and then usually tune down the effect a bit. But yeah, this was tool number three. Let's have a look in the edits. You see we have magic light, neon glow, glow. Now for the next one, we want to use again an AI tool, which is called Relight. And what it does, it allows you to change the brightness based on the depth of the image. So let's just darken the foreground a bit. So just go in this direction and this will darken the foreground. So before and after. And now with the depth slider, you can increase the area that's darkened. So make basically move the plane or the transition area throughout the image based on the depth. So if I go here to the left, nearly nothing will be darken. If I go to the far side, a lot more will be darkened. So I want to push this darkening effect more into or towards the center of the image, which here is more the background. And then you can also brighten the background. But I don't want to do this too much because it's already pretty bright here. So before and after. So this is a very easy way to darken your foreground. Normally in Photoshop, you would do some manual masking for that. And here, this depth slider works pretty well for images like this one, where it's clearly defined where's the foreground, where's the background. I'm not sure how it would work for landscape photos. I'll certainly test it, but yeah, I assume it will be much harder for AI to figure out the depth of the image. But here for such a clear architecture image, it's a pretty good tool to use. And now for the final setting, the fifth setting, let's go to the mood here. And this mood allows you to apply LUTs to your images. And you can even create your own ones, but there's already a great selection of different, for example here, different cinematic LUTs, which completely change the appearance of the image. So for example, let's go to the creative, for example, this Manhattan, or what was it here? Bakersfield, some do a lot to the image, which also doesn't always look good, but there are LUTs which maybe improve it. So it's something I certainly want to check. Let's go with Long Beach here. Now you can go and play with the amount slider. So go to the extreme or yeah, bring it down. So gradually add this LUT before and after. You can change the contrast, which I won't do here. And you can increase saturation, but here's either before and after. So again, another nice change for this image. Now if we go to the edits. You see here, we now applied five settings. Some of those used AI, others didn't even use AI. Now we can go and see the complete before and after. So this was the before. Already looked quite nice, but now we have a lot more atmosphere in the image. And it was done in like less than 10 minutes. So what I could do now, if I have several images of that kind, I could now just go to actions and save this as a preset because this might be a stack of settings I like to use repeatedly 
for such images and this would give me the base i would then certainly go into those different settings and adjust those based on the image but i'd already have a nice start here final thing to do is apply the changes so now they will be rendered and i get the rendered effects into this separate layer on photoshop and then if i want as i said i can mask out or fine tune the amount of the effect overall which is usually something you'd like to do after one or two days if you went a bit too far like i most likely did now okay so we're now back in photoshop here's the before here's the after and here's what I did with my previous edit. So I even went a little more cyan here in the center because I like this color contrast. Yeah, as you saw, pretty easy with Lumina Neo to make such atmospheric changes to your images. So I hope you liked this tutorial. If so, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe for more. Also in the future, it will not just be Lumina Neo. I just had this tool for a few days slash weeks now and I'm really exploring it and wanted to make some videos but I also continue to make videos about Photoshop Lightroom so there will be a lot of content coming up. Okay till then see you in the next video. Bye.